Sarah creates decorative tile and taperware to emulate a calming experience. In merging ornamental <clears throat> ornament and natural occurrences such as rippling water is not only a question of ornamental design, but of also an understanding and of immersive experience. She pairs digital and craft-based techniques to infiltrate contemporary design and honors the tradition of handmade ceramics. Sarah received her MFA from SUNY New Paltz and her BFA from Alpha University. Let's please welcome Sarah Hitmeyer. Good morning. <clears throat> when I was 18, before I decided to pursue an art career, I was invited to paint a mural in the nurse's office of an elementary school. I painted a colorful sunset above the ocean, and several years later, to my surprise, I was told that Whenever the teachers at the school needed a break, they would spend some time with this mural to recenter. Knowing that my painting brought this restorative effect and helped people get through their day meant a lot to me. I recall this experience as I was working on my master's thesis and considering the ideal setting and audience for my work. Even though I had created this mural over 10 years ago, before I had studied ceramics or art history or philosophy, it spoke to the true nature and purpose of my vision, which I currently express as offering a moment of calm through beautiful tile. Tile has been used for centuries to adorn the spaces we inhabit, to offer a sense of beauty, intricacy, and to tell a story. I see opportunities to apply this ornamentation to public spaces, to interrupt our, what we habitually expect from our environment and offer a place to pause. I view my work in two segments. On the one side, it's about pattern, how that pattern becomes tile, and how does a form go into production in the studio. It's about using that pattern as a structure for an experience, this moment of calm. To create that experience, I break down what's happening in these moments. Consider your first impressions of this photo. We respond viscerally to color, our point of view and the general composition. You can see with the uh, color gradients and the scale shift of landmarks that there's a grand space before you. Artists uh, James Terrell and Robert Irwin are known for creating these immersive experiences and they both speak at length about the very specific structures um, and light that they use to create this illusion of space. While their installations are much more minimal than mine, I take their cues or their intention to strip away as much information as possible uh, to minimize how much mental processing we need, how many things your mind has to sort through when you're having an experience, to focus on the color, on distance, and really how your body is responding to what's in front of you. I look for moments of beauty that are stripped of cultural references and add details that hint at the act of perception, such as the subtle curve of the hemisphere on the horizon curving across the surface of these panels, or water pooling as it flows across stone, or many ripples intersecting on the surface of water. I used to use cutouts to sketch the layout of a new design, and this helped me visualize um, a new composition, but also became a system for how the design evolved. As I cut, paste, and rotated shapes, I think of these tools in a system to create patterns that um, create a sense of movement. While I was a graduate student working in a 3D printing lab, I learned that these Tools of cutting, pasting, rotating, um, were basic design commands in computer-aided design and had immense potential, immense potential for complexity and accuracy. I learned the capabilities of CAD as a sketching tool, 
but it could operate on a whole different level and speed up the process I was doing um, in a really incomparable way. So I realized that this tool shifted from being something that I felt I should learn to something that my work needed me to learn in order to push, push it forward. Learning how to process a photograph in a water in a way I could build into tile was a major shift in my work. Until then, I was working with uh, abstracted design and still trying to get the sense of movement. I wanted this illusion of space you can recede into. Um, but it, it, there was still something missing, and I realized having that um, tool of uh, having a hint of realism instantly clicks and visually orients you into a space. It can bring you somewhere else. And this process um, gave me that photorealistic rippling surface, which I can add edges to, I can sculpt into any shape that I'd like, um, and recreate, uh, create this repeating unit that then can become physical through 3D printing or CNC milling. I can take those parts, um, those plastic prints, and use directly as a press mold or I can take those and use them as a prototype for casting a plaster mold. Translating this design into ceramic allowed me to freeze um, this movement that was really elusive um, and examine what is really impossible in reality. I considered which uh, ceramic materials would run, pool, and uh, reflect light to portray uh, the beautiful moments in the day I wish to capture, and that could be completely different dependent on the surface choices I chose to use. Evidence-based design is defined as the process of basing decisions uh, about the built environment on credible research to achieve the best possible outcome. Research shows that exposure to awe-inspiring scenes from nature can provide restorative benefits. I think we can all relate to the experience of fixating on a meditative movement. For me, it's when I see bodies of water and I look for a sense of rhythm and order that whispers of pattern, even though you can't quite grasp it. This is called soft fascination, when objects in nature, such as clouds or rippling leaves, capture our effortless attention and bring a restorative effect. I believe we are drawn to these moments because we sense the pattern of their emergence and look for a trail of movement. These moments capture our attention and hold it. This is the role that pattern plays in my work. Pattern takes longer to perceive and triggers a cognitive response. Repetition or similar shapes give your eye a channel to enter and then follow through the piece. I installed these water tiles directly of photo, photos of water to highlight their function as ornamentation next to the medium of photography, which is the best at recreating reality. The repetition of the tile stops your gaze at their surface while you can recede into the photographs. But I wanted you to recede into the tile I could, I learned how I could replicate the water, but I realized I also wanted to capture the depth in the horizon. I wondered if a sense of infinity and in pattern could suggest a sense of infinity and in distance. I wanted the tiles to form a larger whole, extending beyond our periphery. Inevitably, any pattern is going to remind you of something in history. I asked myself what patterns could serve as the support structure for this experience I want to create. What patterns are conducive to dividing and filling space? What patterns suggest grandeur? The ornamental vaulting in Islamic architecture is designed to suggest space. These intricate patterns are meant to go beyond the comprehension to the common eye and lose you in their mystery and in their infinity. I found relatable instances in Gothic architecture, such as the rose window of the Notre Dame, as you can see here. When considering how to suggest perspective, I was drawn to this design uh, because of the way each uh, division 
in the form tapers with a point of focus in the center, reminding me of a one-point perspective drawing. These sacred references provide another level, a deeper level of content through their suggestion of the intang intangible phenomena that these spaces were built to represent. Through this process, my work evolved not to be about my capacity to create, recreate these forms by hand, but rather how I can translate information and use this vocabulary to achieve this illusion uh, that serves my vision. Just as the craft community values all the subtle details put into each handmade object, I found similar marks in the digital process. Understanding the nuances and craft of virtual objects built a rewarding digital dexterity on top of the manual one I found in the studio. My vision of form had to work in tandem with material testing to successfully pair these complex processes, the digital and the handmade. So whether it's a system for generating pattern and form, this has been a search uh, for structure to create moments of beauty. I want to la launch my work into meaningful, accessible context and allow it to be influenced by its surroundings and how people will experience it. The work can begin and, uh, begin and end with the installation site. So it can answer the questions, what do people in that space need and how can the work offer that? These moments of beauty could reach their full potential where the built environment can have a significant impact on its uh, occupants. A moment of beauty can provide a sense of calm to those stressed and utilitarian spaces, such as hospital waiting rooms and airport terminals. Connecting with interior designers and design consultants with projects requiring large-scale work will facilitate creating a truly immersive experience. And thus, the work can reach its ultimate goal of bringing a sense of calm to those who need it most. Thank you.